Hey there, John Morris here, and welcome to another episode of The John Morris Show. And this is a show where I put out a new tutorial for you every Thursday. And if you have a suggestion or something you'd like me to do a tutorial on, be sure to go ahead and leave that in the comments of this video, and I will try to do that for you. In this episode, I'm going to be covering air handling in PHP, and I'm going to be talking about try-catch blocks and the advantage of using these inside of your code. So, if you're interested in learning about PHP air handling, be sure to stay tuned for the show. This episode is sponsored by the Complete Web Developers Course taught by Rob Percival on Udemy.com. Now what I love about this course is first how comprehensive it is. It's 235 lectures on HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, Bootstrap, WordPress, PHP, MySQL, APIs, and mobile apps. I mean, it's ridiculous. Second, I love how good of a teacher Rob is. As a former school teacher, Rob knows how to explain complex concepts in ways anyone can understand. And of course, the cool thing is I talked Rob into giving my audience an 85% discount on the course. So check the description of this video for a special link that contains a coupon code good for 85% off of the Complete Web Developers course by Rob Percival. Click that link and you'll be all set for the discount. Now, on to the episode. All right, so let's start with a really simple example and explanation. So normally, for example, if you had some sort of error on your website, you'd be in a position, you'd really be in an either or position. You'd be in a position where you turn on display errors for your site so that those errors show up. And what would happen is that your user would see those errors. And that would be, that would have an advantage in a sense that when they saw them, they they would be likely to contact you and say, hey, I'm getting this error. However, the downside of that is that they're really ugly. They can make you look like you don't know what you're doing and uh, really ruin the user experience. The other option that you have is then to suppress those errors. And what often happens is user will get a white screen of death and it won't show any error because you're suppressing them. And now, sure, the user isn't seeing the error. They don't see this big, ugly error. But you also, they don't know what is happening. And so if they contact you, they can just, they're just saying, well, I get a white screen. And it's a lot harder for you to debug. So try catch blocks allow us to kind of get the best of both worlds. They allow us to hide those ugly errors from our users. Uh, but at the same time, catch those errors and be able to do something with them. So let's walk through a quick example. So here we have a very simple try catch finally block. And what we're doing here is we're just echoing out some text. Then here I'm throwing a new exception. And so this is me actually throwing an error on purpose so that we can look at it. I'm giving it a message and I'm giving it a code. And then down here, I'm catching the exception I just created, and I'm echoing out the message that I put in for that. And then our finally block is just an example of something it'll run, uh, it'll always run. So for the try and catch are kind of either only, or, or either or. So when you try and, and run some sort of code and there's an error, that triggers the catch block. If you try some code and there's no error, then this catch block won't be triggered. So those are kind of either or. Either the try works and you don't get catch or it doesn't work and you get the catch triggered. Finally, on the other hand, will regard, will tr trigger regardless. So this code will always run. Now that can be useful for something you may need to do whether you get an error or not, maybe some cleanup and so forth. So you can use finally blocks in that particular case. Right, so this is a really simple example of an error. We're just throwing an error and then we're catching it and we're printing out the message. So if we come over to our kind of demo site here and we refresh this page, you'll see that we get this very, very simple error. We echoed out trying to do something here. We get our error that says, yikes, something went funky. And then this, uh, we have our finally block. This will always run in our try block. So if we come back over here and we 
kind of, uh, we comment out our throwing of this exception and we come back over here, then you'll see that we, our catch block isn't triggered. So we have trying to do something here, which was in our try block. Our catch block isn't triggered and now we have this will always run in our try block from our finally statement. All right, so that gives you a little bit of an idea of how these things work. Now, how would you want to use this? Well, there's a couple of different ways that you could use this. Uh, one example is if you're it, within your own code, as you are writing your functions and so forth, there will be points throughout your code where you want to know if errors happen. Sometimes those errors will be very, very important. For example, if you're querying a MySQL database or a database, and you need the results in order for the page you're building to, to be able to build it, then you want to, you would want to know if you're not getting those results back or there's some sort of error. You would want to know that because you can't build the page without them. Uh, in other cases, you may have errors that crop up that aren't critical to the, the running of the page. Maybe they're less important. And so, in those cases, you would still want to know, but you wouldn't actually want to stop the script from processing. So you would want to be able to allow it to continue to run. And a try catch block allows you to do that. All right. So, uh, that, those are some cases when you would want to use the try catch blocks and kind of how you would want to use them in different scenarios. Now let's walk through an actual example here. So. One of the examples I mentioned is MySQL or connecting to a database. So in this particular example, if you're trying to connect to a database and display results and you have some sort of error, then you really can't continue with the that particular page. However, you want to know that, that that error happened and you want to let the user know that something's going on and what they can do uh, as a result of this particular error, what they can do at this point to move on or to try again or, or something along those lines. So you want to be able to find and catch these errors. Now, uh, what I've set up here is a, just kind of a very basic MySQL uh, request and I put it inside of a tri, tri block. So I'll run through this. So I have my tri block started here. Then inside here, I'm instancing a new instance of MySQL. I'm passing in my host, username, password, and my database name. Then here, this is a kind of our first error check. We're checking to see if there was a MySQL error in this connect up here. If so, we're going to throw a new exception and we're going to pass in for the message, the actual MySQL error that, uh, that happened up here. Okay. So we're, uh, we're catching that error essentially, or we're, we're throwing an exception for that particular error so that we know that it happened. Of course, if everything's fine up here, then we'll continue to process and we'll create our SQL statement. So I'm just doing a select all from our search table, limiting it to 10 results. And then here I'm actually running the query and passing in my SQL statement. So this will actually run the query. And then I'm doing another error check. So if there's no result back from, from this search, then we want to throw a new exception and say, hey, something's going on here. We didn't get a result back from the query that we ran. And so again, we're going to pass in the MySQLi error that, that, that happened up here. Next, then we're going to just do our while loop where we loop through our resource. We fetch the objects and put our results into an uh, array of objects. That's essentially what this is doing here. This is a standard my MySQL kind of request, select request here. Okay, so then if any errors happen in there, we're throwing the exceptions and then we're gonna catch those exceptions. And uh, in a minute here, we're gonna print them out. But for now, I'm actually commenting this out and I'll show you why here in a second. All right, so that's what's happening in our code. If we come back over here to our site, and we refresh this. If everything happens normally, then this is what we're getting. We're getting an array of objects that have the information about from our table. Okay, so this is this is the expected result here. And if we come back over to our code, then we can see that you know that's what we're printing out down here. So everything is executing fine. Now let's go ahead and let's change the database name from snip snippets to snippet. Right, so this table name doesn't exist. 
So this is going to throw an error. This is going to cause an error. So we come back over here. Because I have the printing of the error message commented out, this is what a user would normally see if we're suppressing errors and we have an error. They would just see a white screen like this. And that obviously is not the ideal experience because they don't know what's going on. Chances are they're going to sit here and refresh and refresh and refresh to try and see what's going on with this page. And so we're not giving them any information. They were expecting something different. And so it's a little bit of a problem. And the only way for us to know that this is happening is for us to regularly check our error logs and so forth. Right, so this is kind of what would happen normally if you have some sort of error. Now, if we come back to our code and we uncomment this print R out, and you can see we're catching our exception and storing the exception object or the error object as this variable E. And then down here, we're just printing that out. So if we come back over here and we refresh this, now you can see that in that uh, object, we're getting some information so we can see what the message was uh, we can see the file that it happened in and we have a little bit of information about what's going on here so this gives us something that we can work with uh, we know what file it's happening on and we know what the actual message is or what the error is now this isn't something that we would want to of course display to our users because this would look really crazy and probably scare them so there's a couple things that you can do. A lot of people ask, okay, I know all of that, but what do I actually do with the error itself? When I'm, once I catch the error, what do I do with it? And the answer is it depends. It depends what the error is. So, for example, if it's a critical error, then you would, you would probably want to know about that right away. So there's a couple things that you could do. You could, of course, log that error. Uh, you, you know, you could log it into your error logs, and then if you you regularly check your error logs, then that would be that would maybe work fine for you. But if it's a really really critical error, m maybe you, why not send yourself an email or send someone on your team an email uh, and have them take a look at it. And so, because we're catching this in this this exception, and we can continue to process in PHP, it's not just a, f a fatal error that kills the script, we can actually do that. You could actually set up inside of this to send yourself an email or send somebody an email. And then you could, oh, instead of printing out this error, we could actually echo out some sort of error or some sort of message for our users. So we could say something like, we are having issues. Here is how to get help. Right, something along those lines where we give the user some sort of message. Of course, you could format this in your HTML you know, however you prefer, but this message is a lot better than the message that they would normally get that looks like some crazy code. So, uh, again, inside of your actual catch block and what you do with your errors, that's kind of up to you and what your errors are and whether they're critical errors and you need to stop processing or whether they're errors that you can log and then maybe, you know, notify yourself somehow, but allow the page to continue running. So the try catch blocks make that possible. Instead of just killing the page or having big ugly messages on the page, you can actually suppress all that stuff on your, your PHP site through your any file and so forth. And then you can use error handling along these lines to be able to know when you have errors, to be able to display messages to your users, and to be able to notify yourself of what's going on. And so again, that's going to be up to you and what you're comfortable with, what you want to do, what the errors are, and so forth. Now, if you want to get access to this source code, then the way to do that is to head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash resources, or... If you're on my website, you can simply click the resources tab right up here, and that will take you to my web developer resources page. Now, I have a whole all kinds of web developer resources on here from classes to the different tools that I use. But if you scroll down to the bottom here, then you'll see a section called code snippets, and you'll see PHP code snippets, WordPress code snippets, and Genesis code snippets. So you can go ahead 
and click on through to the code snippets that apply for the video you're watching and you'll be able to get access to th that code snippet. Now, if we click here, for example, on PHP code snippets, then we will be taken to that page and you'll see all of the different code snippets here and you can click through and you'll get the video, you'll get the description and you'll get the code snippet as well. So again, head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash resources, head on down to the code snippet section to get access to the snippet that you're after. Of course, while you're here, you might as well look around and see some of the other developer tools and courses that I have available here that are going to help you down your path of becoming a web developer. And since I'm constantly adding to this page, then you might as well bookmark this page and check back often so you can see all of the things that I've added and get access to all of the tools and snippets and courses and things that I'm using throughout my career. All right, that'll do it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.